Sir John A. Macdonald once said, when Newfoundland joins Canada, it will complete our nation. She holds the key to our front door. But in 1869, Newfoundland rejected confederation with Canada. Nine, 80 years later, Sir John A. Macdonald's dream became a reality. For 15 years prior to that date, Newfoundland was governed by a seven-man commission appointed by the British government. In the early 30s, our public credit had run out and our export markets had collapsed. The people had been reduced to poverty. The commission of government was Britain's answer to what they claimed was the people's inability to govern themselves. In letters patent, it was declared that Newfoundland would decide its own form of government when it was again self-supporting. The Second World War brought relative prosperity and the people again wanted to elect their own government. The Parliament of Great Britain decided that Newfoundland would elect 45 representatives to attend a national convention for the purpose of recommending forms of government to appear on the ballot paper in a national referendum. From October 1946 to January 1948, people throughout Newfoundland and Labrador gathered around their radios to hear the three hours of recorded debate on the day's proceedings at the national convention. In this way, the foundation of the Confederate cause was laid. Its leader was Joseph R. Smallwood, journalist, broadcaster, union organizer, and pig farmer. His main opponent was Major Peter Cashin, advocate of responsible government. Confederation with Canada first became an issue at the convention on October 28, 1946. Mr. Chairman, I further go to state that it is not expected, surely, or Mr. Smallwood expect us, surely, to join with him and in singing the tune to the throne of Mackenzie King. I am one, Mr. Chairman, who has confidence in the future of our country and our people, and I do not believe for a moment that this good ship of state is at all leaky, and I am not prepared to send out an SOS for a Canadian rescue tug. As every man and woman in this island knows, if we could make some arrangements with the United States for the free entry of our fish into the great markets of that country, Newfoundland could well become unbelievably prosperous. Will any person in this country today, Mr. Chairman, disagree with me when I say that this is a matter which should have been dealt with by the United Kingdom government on our behalf when these base deals were first discussed? It is too clearly evident that the interests of Newfoundland were not even a secondary consideration. This is the error, then, which we would now like to correct. This is the blunder, Mr. Chairman, which we would try to rectify. This is the national loss which we would attempt to make good. But when we try to do these things, Mr. Chairman, when we try to help our country, when we try to make our future brighter and more prosperous, what do we meet with? We come up against a stone wall of opposition and a denial of our rights to make any such effort on behalf of Newfoundland. The ruling of the late chairman <clears throat> and of Professor Weir was that this convention had a perfect right to send a delegation to the United States to consider possible political union with the United States, should the United States be so minded to receive any such delegation. But not. He gave no ruling whatever on the question as to whether trade negotiations would be on the same basis. To send a delegation consisting of the chairman and six other of its members to Ottawa to ascertain from the government of the Dominion of Canada what fair and equitable basis may exist for federal union of... By the way, I note by recent papers that there are 30,000 men unemployed in the Maritimes alone. Can it be that things are so wonderful in this paradise that men don't need to work? Gentlemen, before leaving this matter, I would say just this. Look out for those amongst us who would take ourselves and our country on a one-way ride. But let me again return to my comments on the delegation to England. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, there are some people... Who... The thought of the committee was that the best time
to read this whole report would be after the terms themselves have arrived from the government of Canada. Then the terms and this report can be taken hand in hand together because one belongs to the other. That's all I'm going to say about the report. And in no country that I know do they agree more than they do in Newfoundland. They agree on this, that if there is one class of person in Newfoundland in this country who deserve the respect and the love and the admiration of the people of Newfoundland, it is the clergy of all denominations. And I regret to say that in this city there is published a daily newspaper which while we were absent from Newfoundland doing work for Newfoundland was contemptible enough to publish prominently a vile and a vicious attack upon a minister, and I refer to the Reverend Lester L. Burry, who was not even present in Newfoundland to defend his good name. Holier than thou, you take it now. I'm going to get this off my chest. It's coming up. Order. I'm going to have my say. I'm having my say on this. Order, please. Order. You write your point of order. Will you sit down, please? State your point of order. Mr. Dahl, will you be quiet, please? If I can't have order in this house, I shall leave the chair. I move the following resolution. Be it resolved that the National Convention desires to recommend to His Majesty's government in the United Kingdom that the following form of government be placed before the people of Newfoundland in the forthcoming national referendum, namely, Confederation with Canada upon the basis submitted to the National Convention on November the 6th, 1947, by the Prime Minister of Canada. I say to the many, many thousands of Newfoundlanders who want Confederation with Canada, and I say to the members of this Convention that although the Confederates in the Convention are outnumbered, outnumbered almost two to one. Although we are a minority in the convention, our recommendation will be respected by the British government. There is no doubt about it. Confederation will be on the ballot paper in the referendum. Our people will get their chance to vote for Confederation this spring. They are not going to be carried away because they know, they know that 99 Newfoundlanders out of 100 want Confederation to be submitted to them after this convention comes to an end. This is not 1869. This time, the people are going to know the truth. They are not going to be smothered with the lies and propaganda of 1869. It was easy enough in 1869 to bluff the people with lies about their property being taxed. But this time, the anti-Confederates are not going to get away with it. No, not even, not even, if every millionaire, half millionaire, and quarter millionaire in the country rallies to the call of the anti-Confederates. The day has gone in Newfoundland, when the money bags could tell our people how to vote. That day is gone. Mr. Higgins. Now, sir, I also would like to say that I concur with the previous speakers in the views expressed by them on the communistic tinge of Mr. Smallwood's remarks during this debate. For the benefit of the member from Bonavista Center, I would quote to him the words of Sir Walter Scott. Breathe there a man with soul so dead 
who never to himself hath said, This is my own, my native land, whose heart hath ne'er within him burned, as home his footsteps he hath turned from wandering on a foreign strand. If such their breeze go mark him well, for him no minstrel raptures swell, high though his titles, proud his name, bound let his wealth as wish can claim. Despite these titles, power and pelt, the wretch, concentered all in self, living shall forfeit fair renown, and doubly dying shall go down to the vile dust from whence he sprung, unwept, unhonored, and unsung. <laughs> We Confederates were not afraid to let the people decide on responsible government and commission government. We voted to place those two forms on the ballot paper. If the anti-Confederates are not afraid that the people will vote for Confederation, let them vote now tonight to place Confederation on the ballot in the referendum. Come on, let them throw all their excuses out the window and vote for this motion. Let them show us now that they're not afraid to let the people decide on confederation. I dare them to do it. Uh, the motion before the House is, be it resolved that the National Convention desires to recommend to His Majesty's Government in the United Kingdom that the following form of government be placed before the people of Newfoundland in the forthcoming national referendum, <laughs> namely, Confederation with Canada upon the basis submitted to the National Convention on November 6, 1947, by the Prime Minister of Canada. Is the Convention ready for question? All in favor of the motion, please say A. Contrary minded? Nay. Nay. Will all who are in favor of the motion please to rise? Will all members who are against the motion please to rise? What is the result? 416 against hmm? 28. 416 against 28. For the motion. For 16. For 16. Yeah. 28. 28. I declare the motion lost. The motion to include Confederation on the ballot paper was lost. But the broadcasts of that convention had had their effect. Smallwood appealed to the people, and a petition of protest was forwarded to the governor containing 50,000 signatures. Confederation was included on the ballot for the national referendum. On June 3, 1948, the results of the referendum were for responsible government 44.5%, for confederation 41.1%, and for commission of government 14.3%. No one had a clear majority, which was a necessary condition laid down by the British government. It was also stipulated that the form of government which received the smallest number of votes would be dropped from the ballot if a second referendum was necessary. So on July 22, 1948, in the second ballot, the result was for responsible government 47.4% and for confederation 52.3%. 85% of the eligible voters had cast their ballots. At one minute before midnight on March 31, 1949, Newfoundland became a province of Canada. Newfoundland has prospered within this union, and we look back to the National Convention with nostalgia. Those 45 men who took part in the National Convention have implanted their names indelibly in our history. Some of them were great men. All of them fought for a cause they felt was worth fighting for. You have heard some of them, and in so doing, you have heard history in the making. <laughs>